At Sagi, researchers discovered the delta-type wing produced much less drag than swept or straight wings. They also found that the thinner a wing is relative to its width, the less drag it produces. Experiments with the MiG-15 and 17 had demonstrated the benefits of an engine installed inside the fuselage with a nose intake. These were subsonic aircraft, however, and as speeds increased through the transonic zone, it became necessary to slow down incoming air with a cone-shaped inlet spike. The result of this research was the MiG-21, another major achievement for Mikoyan and Gerovich. The performance of the aircraft was so outstanding that for the first time the Soviets decided to claim official world speed records. The value of propaganda overwhelmed that of official secrecy. The result was another victory for Artyom Mikoyan. On the 1st of October 1959, MiG bureau test pilot Georgi Mosolov set the Soviet official world speed record on a closed 25-kilometer course. He was clocked at 2,388 kilometers per hour. The Cold War climate during this era stressed parity with the West. The development of supersonic fighter aircraft and the introduction of the Mark II capable MiG-21 allowed the Soviet air forces to grow and improve. Mikoyan had his success. Now his rival Alexander Yakovlev was trying not to be left behind, not just competing against the West. His first twin-engine interceptor was called the Yak-25. NATO codenamed it Flashlight. It was selected for Air Force use in May 1953. Yakovlev's next effort was a greatly improved interceptor similar to the Yak-25, but much more powerful. It had two of the Chumansky RA-1 turbojets developed for the MiG-21. The bicycle landing gear allowed space for large weapons stored under the wings and fuselage. Serious production of the Yak-28 began in the early 1960s. It surpassed many established aircraft in speed, range and altitude capability. Continuing development and modification of the Yak-28 proved it to be a versatile aircraft capable of adjusting to many roles during the dynamics of the Cold War. In 1964, a growing escalation of American involvement in Indochina led to an inevitable collision with communist North Vietnamese forces. During that year, it was reported that North Vietnamese torpedo boats attacked a U.S. Navy destroyer. The response was a series of bombing raids over the port of Haiphong and a massive air operation known as Rolling Thunder. On the ground, North Vietnamese ground controllers tracked American aircraft and vectored North Vietnamese MiG-17s towards them, using a classic Soviet tactic called ground control intercept. These attacks carried out over North Vietnam against the US aircraft like the F-105 were effective. The MiG-17s were considerably more maneuverable than American fighter bombers like the F-105 Thunder Chief, the primary bombing aircraft of Rolling Thunder. The North Vietnamese used ambush tactics to engage the American pilots suddenly at close range with 37 mm cannon fire. The Thunder Chief was a well-regarded aircraft, but the MiG-17 was a pure dogfighter in the hands of a capable pilot. New tactics and increasing large assaults by North Vietnamese pilots took a serious toll on American fighter bombers. U.S. fighter escorts firing Sidewinder missiles downed around 100 MiGs during Rolling Thunder. It 
It didn't help the Americans that in 1966, the Soviet Union and China was aiding the fledgling North Vietnamese Air Force. Now, it had the faster, more deadly MiG-21 interceptors. The tilting balance of air power angered the Americans, who decided to carry out a massive raid on the Phu Kien airfield near Hanoi. Nonetheless, the MiG continued to harass the Americans. It was decided that the US pilots would now try some ambush tactics of their own. The plan, called Operation Bolo, called for US F-4 Phantoms to fly their usual bomb runs, armed only with air-to-air -air missiles. Taking the bait, North Vietnamese MiGs flew into the trap. The MiG pilots found the F-4 pilots capable dogfighters. Still, North Vietnamese Air Force pilots flew against the Americans. They shot down 81 US aircraft and held their own in desperate air-to-air -air engagements. Those that survived honed their skills and learned to rely on experience rather than ground controllers. Meanwhile, during the height of the Vietnam War, the Soviets celebrated the 50th anniversary of the October Revolution and their technological prowess in the air at a special Domodedovo air show. Soviet Premier Leonid Brezhnev is on hand to greet the chief constructors of the great Soviet design bureaus. Near the end of the show, a new aircraft no one had ever seen before streaked over the runway. Knowledgeable foreign observers did a double take as the three aircraft disappeared into the clear blue sky. The announcer described them as a new interceptor capable of Mach 3 flight. The design proposal dated back to 1958 when Soviet intelligence became aware of American plans to develop high-speed, high-altitude aircraft like the B-70 Valkyrie bomber. In response, Mikoyan designers developed the YE-155 prototype, which was the essence of all MiG fighters that would become known to NATO as the Fox Bats. The aircraft was large and powerful. It held the promise of being a true Mach 3 interceptor. The production aircraft named the MiG-25 proved deadly in its intended role as a high-speed, high-altitude interceptor. A powerful new radar named the Smirch, or Whirlwind, was developed for the aircraft. It was capable of burning through any electronic jamming within 70 kilometers. The Foxbat was also able to carry a large new family of deadly air-to-air -air missiles. Photo reconnaissance was a secondary role for the MiG-25. The cameras fitted to the MiG-25R were capable of taking detailed pictures of the entire United Kingdom in the course of one flight. During the 1973 Middle East War, a MiG-25R was clocked over Israel at Mark 3.2. The new MiG's performance caused great alarm in the West. In response, the US government appropriated funds to develop the fast and powerful McDonnell Douglas F-15 fighter. While the F-15 was designed to counter the MiG-25, it was the General Dynamics F-111 swing-wing fighter bomber that left a lasting impression on the Soviets. At Sagi, researchers carefully developed experimental swing-wing designs in their laboratory.
The first Russian variable wing fighter to take to the skies was the Sukhoi 22i. But the first operational version would be designed by Artyom Mikoyan, a two-time hero of the Soviet Union and dean of the Russian fighter design establishment. As the world's fighter aircraft grew faster, difficulties with low speed factors increased. Mikoyan's solution was a variable geometry wing aircraft. The new prototype fighter would become known as the MiG-23, NATO codenamed Flogger. Pilots could adjust the wing sweep angle to best suit operating conditions. Soviet pilots were used to the high takeoff and landing speeds of the MiG-21. The new variable geometry system of the MiG-23 offered much better handling qualities at low speeds. The new interceptor featured a powerful Lyulka engine, as well as upgraded electronics. It had to meet the demands of the Soviet Air Force, which called for beyond visual range capability. A pair of Apex air-to-air -air missiles were guided by a Sapphire radar system, which offered limited all-weather capability. While Western designers at the time depended heavily on radar, the Soviet Air Force believed in supplementing radar with infrared guidance systems. It was felt they stood a better chance in air combat against increasingly sophisticated electronic countermeasures. The MiG-23 could also carry two to four close-range missiles designed for dogfights. A double-barrel 23mm cannon complemented the missiles and they proved to be a deadly combination. Meanwhile, the MiG-25 remained Russia's most advanced and secret fighter aircraft. It had been in service for almost four years, but the Foxbat's capabilities were still a mystery to Western intelligence sources. On the 6th of September 1976, a MiG-25 took off from an airbase near Vladivostok and landed unexpectedly at a Japanese airport. Its pilot, Viktor Belenko, had defected. Western experts examined it in detail. The Fox Bat's myths were now unraveled. It was much heavier and simpler than supposed. The huge Chumansky engine guzzled fuel, severely limiting the aircraft's range. It seemed more a rocket than an airplane. The MiG-25 was no dogfighter. It was an extraordinary aircraft, but not the threat the West had imagined. But in the Soviet Union, the Fox Bat continued to break records. Mikoyan chief test pilot Alexander Fedotov used the MiG-25's incredible power-to-weight ratio to climb straight up. He set many records, including the absolute altitude record of 37,600 meters, which still stands. The aircraft was also fast in level flight. Svetlana Savitskaya set several closed-circuit records before she became the second female Soviet cosmonaut. The MiG-25 design team was awarded the Lenin Prize for its achievement. Mikoyan Design Bureau Director Rostislav Belyakyov was honored along with Nikolai Matyuk, the chief designer. Four other members of the team got their awards for engine, radar and the control system. The MiG-25 was so successful that it provided the basis for the Mikoyan Bureau's next project, the MiG-31. The new aircraft's ancestry was apparent, but its looks were deceiving.
The new fighter, codenamed Foxhound by NATO, featured a powerful phased array radar system, the first of its kind manufactured in the Soviet Union. Instead of using a moving dish to scan targets, it could locate them from above by use of an electronic lens. This method can distinguish moving objects against ground clutter, hence the name look down, shoot down. The MiG-31, unlike all its predecessors, has special equipment designed to share information with other aircraft in the group. This allows the aircraft to work as an autonomous system and represents a major shift in Soviet philosophy. It stresses the pilot's autonomy in the role of free hunter rather than the restrictions of the ground control intercept doctrine. The Foxhound can fire from above its opponents while moving at higher speeds. MiG's AA-9 AMOS air-to-air -air missiles are launched from semi-recessed positions under the fuselage. They have a range approaching 120 kilometers. 